my, my sister is deaf and she has cerebral palsy and she has a slight mental impairment. So it sometimes it is uncomfortable for other people to approach her and her husband, who is also deaf. Um, and when you talked about the dog being a welcoming component, I laughed because her, her husband got two dogs, and I think one of hers, that go after people, so they chase them away. <laughs> the opposite effect. What is the name of your dog? My dog is named Maxine. She was trained at the Seeing Eye, a school in New Jersey. How long has you had Maxine? I've had Maxine eight years. <laughs> She's 10 years old and her first two years she was at guide dog school. Really? Are you the first owner of Maxine? Uh, I'm the first blind person to have Maxine, but before me there was a volunteer puppy raiser. So the first year of a guide dog, they're trained by a family who gets them acclimated to living with people in all different kinds of social settings. Volunteer puppy raisers are really important to guide dogs. No, it was. it's funny that that was what in, in, inspired me, but there were so many moments when you talked that were, were inspiring to the, the idea that, that a person with a disability could be the people that lead innovation in this world uh, because of the challenges they face. Those represent opportunities to overcome disabilities. Um, when, when did you begin to look at the world that way? How old were you when you started to look at the world as disabilities, people with disabilities, were innovators? These are stories that most people never hear about, <laughs> and I didn't learn about these stories until I was in college. Really? So it took a while to learn about them. and. Most people with disabilities don't even hear these stories. They're hidden. So recently I've been reading more and more about the history of disability rights and innovators, scientists who had disabilities because they want to know the history. And when we highlight these stories, more people learn that disability drives innovation. And that's one of the reasons why companies should hire more people with disabilities. Do your parents still live in, in Africa? My parents are in California. In California. Were they always in California? What did I, maybe I missed something at some point in time. I just wanted to say So my parents now live in California. And originally they were in Eritrea and Ethiopia. That's what I thought. My older brother... My older brother was born in Eritrea and later moved here. Right. But I was born here. What did your parents do in your life that inspired you and your brother to do the things that you do? You are unique people. <laughs> so my parents grew up during a war when life was very difficult. And they had to be pioneers in their own way. Refugees are kind of like pioneers, going to a new country, struggling to create a new community, developing their education. And my parents shared those stories with me. And hearing those stories, I learned how important it is to drive your own future, to go forward. It's, I think most Americans copy what their parents do or follow in the footsteps of the people around them. Refugees and pioneers go somewhere new, somewhere where they don't know, somewhere, that, somewhere that's a huge unknown. So my parents did that and I grew up hearing those stories. 
So I learned to also be a pioneer and go into the unknown. Uh, I believe that as well. Um, that's why it's always interesting to hear about people's parents, families, um, siblings. Um, you learn so much. You, in the speech this morning, it was very inspirational to, to lawyers in multiple ways. Um, I'm a lawyer, but now I have a, a company which helps lawyers. How do you feel about the impact you're having on thousands of people um, every day um, as such a young person? How does that make you feel I mean, What is, as you travel and speak to people and meet people? I love meeting people and learning about their stories and teaching them about disability rights and inclusion. If every person at this conference goes back to their companies, their law firms, and shares these ideas that disability drives innovation, we need to hire more people with disabilities, and we need to make our services more accessible, then we'll have a better world. So I hope lots of people take this message take the feeling of inspiration and turn it into action. Yeah, and he, even if not everybody does, some will. As soon as you were done, I came out and talked to my, my CTO, and I said, maybe there's things that I take for granted on dis disabilities. We cannot miss anything. Um, we have to look for every opportunity with the interfaces that we present online to to accommodate people with disabilities but to give them the power to empower themselves with what we provide them um, so it, it was very impactful for me and I very much thank you for being here and I I'm really happy to hear that uh, one idea I can share is when podcasts have transcripts or videos have transcripts it increases the content associated with your it increases the text associated with your content which means more people can find your content it allows for powerful keyword searches so if you add transcripts with your talks more people can access them we're, we're doing that and we it may have been uh, reading about you may have been just us talking internally but we're doing exactly that so um, I I'm very lucky that I get to travel and meet interesting people like yourself and get to interview them and then share that with other people because it's not me that's inspiring it's you that's inspiring but to put it in text so we are doing that and as soon as the video is done we'll get it our interview will reduce it to text and and share it more widely now I'll know how important it is because of you <laughs> when, when you go ahead I'm happy to hear that yeah. why did you want to become a lawyer the law is a series of skills essentially problem solving skills analytical skills and once you have those skills and you know what the rules are, you're able to help more people. I wanted to become a lawyer so that I could help remove barriers to increase opportunities for people. Thanks for saying that. That was, I wanted to be a lawyer close to the same reasons because I, I thought if I didn't know the rules, I wouldn't be able to help people. <laughs> and I hope more lawyers think of it that way. Somebody needs to be there to interpret the rules for them. Do you, do you, do you still, do you still practice law? Do you practice law? Hold a license? I am still a member of the California Bar. You are. But I no longer do litigation. Now I focus on public speaking, consulting, and writing my book. Congratulations. How long did you did you do litigation? Short time, two <laughs> and a half years. Did you like it? I found it powerful. It does create a lot of changes. But at the same time, 
given my unique skills for inspiring people and motivating people to take action, I think I'm actually more effective and powerful as a public speaker. Like speaking in front of hundreds of people, teaching them about inclusion, I can help them make accessibility changes so they don't get sued. How many speaking engagements do you do in a year or even a month? Around three a month. Very good. So you touch a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> traveling all the time. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, you're a very inspiring uh, person, and you're impacting a lot of people. And at a, at, a, at a young age, you have so many more people that you will impact. And if I was using the keyboard, it would be very slow. But I loved your answer when you said you were an inclusionist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you type slowly, I can read slowly. I'll accommodate you. <laughs> and you said that President Obama was a slow, slow typer. Yes, it's true. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much. So you've met with a lot of people and you've been a lawyer way longer than me. Yep. Do you have advice for me? I think you have to follow your passion. I think you have to let yourself be guided by how you can impact the most people in a positive way. Um, I represented injury victims and their family members and some small business people but always people, never companies. Um, and I did that because I thought I could help them. When I found the internet, I answered people's questions on American Online back in the 1990s. And I found that I had a gift for helping more people than just one client at a time. So I left the practice of law and moved my family to Seattle from, from a small town in Wisconsin. And the focus is to help people. Um, and that never gets old. <laughs> it gets you up in the morning um, when things are hard. You, you may face greater obstacles, but you see them as opportunities. But I, that would be my advice. I miss sometimes representing people. Um, but I still think I'm doing a good job for people. Does that make sense? Yes, mm. I agree. Helping people never gets old. <laughs> it's rewarding, and it's 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 enough to get you out of bed every morning. That's, that's right. <laughs> that's very right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Do you have any other questions for me? Did anything surprise you from this morning? <laughs> Yes, how easy it was to be in the audience and have you speak just like any other presenter. There was, there was no difference from somebody speaking that was not blind, that was not deaf. And I don't know what I thought for sure, but I thought there would be something different. Um, that's a good surprise. Um, very good surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy you enjoyed the talk, and I'm grateful that we had the opportunity to chat and exchange ideas. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. If there's ever anything that we can do for you to shine a light on your work, to get your work out to lawyers, um, we're always available to do so. And I will follow you on Twitter. Um, if you'll befriend me on Facebook, I'll reach out to you on Facebook. And I will stay in touch with the good work that you're doing.
Thank you. I saw some of your tweets from this morning. <laughs> Thanks for tweeting about my talk. How do you read Twitter? Does it come up just voice off the text? So in my talk, I show oh, that's like, right. accessible news yeah. and the same way. That's right. I saw that. I'm sorry. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It was too. great. Enjoy your stay. You too. How long have you worked together? I forgot to ask that. So she and I are friends, and we've been friends for about two years. I have a team of about 10 friends who take turns going on events with me, depending on their schedules. Very good. Thanks.